Joe Burrow remains the only NFL quarterback to beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. That's active anyway. Let's talk about some takeaways from the conference championship games. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Bengals fans and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host Jake Lisko. He's your host James Rapine. The Locked On Bengals podcast comes to you every day on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcast. So if you're new to the show looking for off-season coverage as the draft approaches, free agency approaches, the Bengals still have a coaching hire to make. This is the place for you every day you can join the list of everydayers the list of people who make us their first listen and we appreciate every single one of you who does those things today's episode brought to you by FanDuel right now you can get $200 in bonus bets that's up to $200 if your bet of $5 or more wins visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started and James some interesting games in the conference championship certainly some interesting takeaways about an AFC North rival the Baltimore Ravens and a Mm -hmm. wild game in the NFC. But as we were discussing before the show, the focus probably for, for the Bengals is on the AFC side of things, as far as a number of takeaways we can get into from both games. No doubt. There's a a lot of takeaways, a lot of little things I think we can discuss, but the first thing is first and Patrick Mahomes is going to another Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson came up very, very short. And I really like Lamar. You know, the the Bengals and Ravens, they're rivals. But once upon a time, Lamar Jackson was someone when the Bengals hosted him for a pre-draft visit that I said, oh, if he's there, oh, and guess what? He was there, and then he fell to the Ravens. And since then, it's been really the Bengals' biggest rival in the division over the past couple of years. I think that's fair to say. The playoff game, you know, the Hubbard Yard dash, all of those things, fumble in the jungle, whatever you want to call it. And so this weekend, I, I really thought, Jake, it was a chance. And I, I don't think I said it on the pod, but it was a chance for Lamar Jackson to pass Joe Burrow. It was. And I'm telling you now, he has not passed Joe Burrow. And whatever analyst says that or whatever, it doesn't matter. Two MVPs, it doesn't matter because you're two and five in the postseason, which is the opposite of Joe Burrow's record, five and two in the postseason. He had a chance to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, be the best team in the AFC, not only in the playoffs, but all season long. And they would have had a really good shot of beating the 49ers, I think. They had already beaten them earlier this year, and I might have taken the 49ers, but man, Brock Purdy looks a little shaky. So the main takeaway to me, one, Lamar Jackson doesn't pass Joe Burrow. And then something you mentioned, Joe Burrow's the only quarterback Right now in the NFL, maybe Brock Purdy changes that in less than two weeks in Super Bowl Super Bowl 58 in Vegas. But as of right now, only active quarterback to beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. To beat Patrick Mahomes when it matters, with the season on the line. He did it at Arrowhead. And so, yeah, the AFC, it runs through Patrick Mahomes. It should. They've won four out of five AFC championships. But the second guy, it's not Josh Allen. It's not Lamar Jackson. It's not Justin Herbert. It's not insert Deshaun Watson, Browns fans, for those clamoring to 2020 and thinking Deshaun's going to be that again. And maybe he will be. Who knows? I doubt it. It's Joe Burrow. And he's number two. I think he's the second best quarterback in the NFL. And that should make you feel really good, Bengals fans, because it means you're going to have as good a shot as anyone next year at making a a run to the Super Bowl in New Orleans. When Burrow's healthy, when Burrow is playing unencumbered, we've seen time and time again that he can elevate the Cincinnati Bengals team to heights that are very difficult to reach with fully healthy teams. And the Bengals have been far from that deep in the playoffs. It has cost them deep in the playoffs, but they have been right there tantalizingly close the last couple of years until this year where Joe Burrow was injured and wasn't there to lift up the mess around him. But you look at the Ravens and there are certainly takeaways on the Chiefs side of things as well here. You look at the Ravens. This is the best roster that Lamar Jackson has been on in his NFL career. I would say I was looking at the roster going into the game and looking deep on the depth chart 
around the place where you'll find guys that didn't really play for the Bengals, the Joe Bacci equivalents on the Baltimore Ravens. Not to take anything away from Joe, great depth piece for the Bengals, but you look at those guys on the Ravens and you know who they are because they've played in big moments and made big plays. And the depth for the Ravens was so strong then you look at the, the top-end talent for the Ravens. Lamar Jackson, likely MVP. Zay Flowers, big breakout year. Mark Andrews, all-pro type tight end. I know he was hurt and coming off injury. Isaiah likely has been really good for them at tight end as well. On the defensive side of the ball, you're getting all-pro kind of play from Roquan Smith, from Kyle Hamilton. You're getting really good play from Justin Matabike, Patrick Queen. The list goes on. Marcus Williams, that's a really well-put-together team. With good young players, good veteran signings, good depth pieces, good top end talent. And they couldn't get over the hump. They couldn't conquer Patrick Mahomes at home, no less. Patrick Mahomes having to go on the road this year in the playoffs for the first time in his career, getting it done on his way to the Super Bowl. So that, I think, with Lamar, has to make you wonder a little bit. You mentioned the two and five record. Great regular season player, no doubt. Great player, no doubt. But at some point, that postseason track record is a real thing. And I think mm -hmm. we're at that point. Not to take anything away from the Chiefs, very tough game, but 10 points at home. You score seven early in the game. I know they had a goal line turnover, but man, not being able to get back into the end zone in the second half, that's, that's a rough way to go. Yeah, it is. And by the way, before we get we get into who the Ravens are and, and I, I kind of think why this Bengals team has had the success they've had in the playoffs to a certain degree, which we can get into in a few minutes. You mentioned Matt Abike. Did you see those yeah. PFF PFF numbers? Can, can I, can I With read the them? Contract to you? projection, 13 quarterback pressures, ah. 13 quarterback pressures over the past couple of weeks, three cleanup pursuit pressures, a half a sack, but pressure, 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 pressure on the interior that but there might be some some dreaming about the Ravens interior defensive lineman in the Bengals free agency future. Because if he's, you can land him, oh baby. He's gonna make a lot of money. A lot of I, money. I would People. be fairly surprised. Me too. I, I I mean, if there's a place that you could see them making a splash, I think that is the position. But boy, that's that a big be, splash. That would be outside. I mean, I know they've signed some guys. I know they signed Orlando Brown. I know they signed DJ Reader. I know they signed Trey Hendrickson. I know they spent some big money on some guys, including at that position and DJ Reader. Not that Matabike is the same player, a little bit of a different style, different position, but defensive tackle. Uh, they didn't pay those guys the kind of money Matabike is going to get. No doubt. I mean, you will he get 20 per? I think more is, is where Brad has him projected. And yeah. I think that it's reasonable. Those interior defenders are getting paid crazy money. And so it's probably a pipe dream. I agree. But man, oh man, I get it. When you go through those free, those mock free agency in, in off seasons with the draft, I get it. Bengals fans. That That's yeah. all just pointing that out. Like of, of all those guys who that, that is someone that they will certainly miss. And then the other aspect of this, they, they could be losing Mike McDonald, which, uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll talk about at some point, but obviously he's a top defensive coordinator. And losing that piece is, is pretty monumental. I mean, the Ravens do a great job with hires. I think I, I'm not really fooling myself into thinking the Ravens are going to hire a replacement. If Mike McDonald does go for that Seattle job, which kind of seems like it's potentially in the pipeline. That's the, intuition that i have who knows how that ends up but th they're doing a great job bringing coaches and players in in baltimore is something that the bengals should honestly probably emulate a little bit more than they already do baltimore not afraid to to get creative to go for the top guys for some of those coordinator jobs and it, it paid dividends this year not as many dividends as they would like to see but i don't think you can blame the defense too much in this one, no. blanking the Chiefs in the second half, despite getting dwarfed in time of possession. The one big issue, penalties for the Ravens, an issue all year for them, tons of personal fouls, undisciplined play from that defense. That is something that will have to be cleaned up for the Ravens if they want to go anywhere 
regardless of who's in charge. But there are three other teams that we need to talk about, James, including the Chiefs, including some themes. We'll continue the conversation coming up next. This episode is sponsored by FanDuel. The Super Bowl is here, and Bengals fans, I know you're not very happy about the teams competing. This is probably the most anti-Bengal Super Bowl that could be. At least it arguably is with the history between the Bengals and the Chiefs and the Bengals and the 49ers. But despite all of that, FanDuel has some great offers for you and many ways to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but there are also bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. If you're a new customer, you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get into the game. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Today's show is also brought to you by Schultz Jewelers. Schultz Jewelers is the place you need to go if you want to get blinged out like Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase and company, or if you're looking for that perfect diamond for her. And Heck, maybe you've been married for 25 years and with Valentine's Day coming up, you're thinking, I need to surprise the wife. Well, Schultz Jewelers is the place to go because Matt Schultz, well, he's got a background in education and a background in Bengals. So please talk Bengals with him while you're there. But they've been in the business for 70 years. So they can take you through the process, figure out exactly what you are looking for. Maybe you don't know what you're looking for. They'll help you find that perfect diamond in their modern jewelry store because they have unique custom designs, permanent jewelry, and there really isn't anyone like them because they also have lab-grown diamonds. So you can get that perfect diamond without hurting your wallet. And, well, they're close by. In fact, they're just five minutes from the bridge into Kentucky at 2202 Dixie Highway in Fort Mitchell. You can check them out online at schulzdiamonds.com. That's schultzdiamonds.com. The Bengals strive for perfection. Schultz Jewelers does too, because when it has to be perfect, it has to be Schultz Jewelers. James, let's talk Chiefs a little bit here before we get to the NFC, which was a crazy game in the NFC Championship in its own right. The biggest comeback in conference championship history. I believe no team trailing by 17 points at halftime had ever come back to win the conference championship was a stat that I saw treated by Jay Morrison, our guy on the Bengals beat the Kansas city chiefs remain a playoff juggernaut four out of five years. Like you said, they've hit another gear a little bit in the playoffs or winning in different ways this year. It's the defense and Travis Kelsey, Marquez Valdez, Scantling remains a clutch player in the playoffs, but overcoming some, some offensive issues this year, finding their way on defense, Steve Spagnuolo putting together uh, a defensive coordinating effort to rival that of Mike McDonald, who I am eager to see get a job outside of the division. But when it was 17 to seven or 14 to seven, there were a whole lot of points early in that game. I was talking to my, my friends, I was watching the game with James, and I said, I think it's about to get a whole lot harder for this offense. I'll be surprised if we see any points scored until the fourth quarter. Just because those two guys, McDonald and Spags, are two of the best in the NFL at adjusting to what offenses are doing and making life really, really hard on you once you get out of your script, once they see what you're trying to do. And that kind of played out. And I think that's a theme that you're going to see is finding the counterpunch to the counterpunch. Something the Bengals have been able to do against the Chiefs and Steve Spagnuolo will need to be able to continue to do. But that's one of the takeaways when I look at the Chiefs. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is is playing at a high, high level in the playoffs. One of the few teams to slow him down in the playoffs in recent years is the Cincinnati Bengals. That would need to remain true. They need to recover on defense in Cincinnati. But the defensive coordination for both of those teams in the AFC was something that I really noticed as well. It was. There, there's no denying it. And I think one reason why the Bengals, they're so good at adjusting is, is they adjust and they don't abandon who they are on offense. We know they're going to put the ball in Joe Burrow's hands and the game in Joe Burrow's hands. And most of the time they come out on top in these big games. And it's been really close down to the wire when, when they haven't, obviously last year in the AFC title game. The, the Ravens didn't do that. 
in a guy who's getting some head coaching buzz, Todd Monk and the offensive coordinator for the Ravens. They run it. We were talking about it before. Six times with running backs. Yeah, two, crazy. two handoffs to Zay, Zay Flowers. Lamar ran it eight times, which I think with the way the Chiefs are playing them, and you have a sticky secondary, you kind of want Lamar to run it. You know, like you want that to be a Lamar run game because it, it it gives a whole new dimension that the Chiefs haven't seen because until you face Lamar, there's nothing like it. It's it's different when he's running and he's dynamic and he's making it tough. And I, I think the Ravens. They did. I agree with you on both defensive coordinators, but the Ravens made it kind of easy at times to defend, and they abandoned who they were to a degree. And you want to adjust without completely going away with that from that. And and how are you best? And where are you best? And let's be honest here. Lamar's best when he's able to run and make plays. That doesn't mean he can't throw it. I'm not saying that. Of course he can. We saw that, heck, the throw to Zay Flowers, the touchdown was awesome and, and him buying time in the pocket. But to your point, these two defensive coordinators, much like Luana Rumo, deep playoff runs, you adjust and you try to shut down the opposing team's offense. And if you have the right pieces, you can still do that. As much as it's a quarterback league, think about that. That was Patrick Mahomes and that was Lamar Jackson. The other takeaway, and, and this is a, a Chiefs one, the Chiefs have completely adapted to who they are personnel-wise. They're really good defense. They're asking their quarterback to not turn the ball over. That's a major thing, especially in the second half. And we've seen that from Burrow the past couple of years in some of these playoff games. When you kind of know you're not going to be able to move the ball a ton because of the matchup, because of the personnel, whatever the case is. And they made plays certainly early on. But that second half, they weren't doing anything. But they trusted their defense, and they obviously had the one long play in the end to, to clinch it. You could talk about punters as well, looking, cool. at, looking at that game. And, hmm. and some of the punts that were hit and not hit. I mean, it's a really up and down game for Tommy Townsend. But uh, he started off rough and then he was pretty darn good. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. It was a tale of, of two, two sections because I wouldn't yeah. even say halves, but sections for Townsend. Uh, another big one is when you get a chance to take the ball away on defense, you just see time and time again how much that matters in both games. You have. Two fumbles for the Kansas City Chiefs. They recover both of their own fumbles. You have two fumbles by the Baltimore Ravens. They lose both of their fumbles. You look at the Lions. They have a ball go off of a safety's face mask. Turns into an explosive play for, for Brandon Ayuk. And when you have those opportunities, you have the drops for the Lions. When you have those opportunities, when, when your hands are on the football and you don't complete the catch, you don't scoop up the fumble when you have an opportunity to take it off the carpet, you got you to gotta capitalize on those opportunities. Not that that's like a team-building takeaway or something the Bengals can do in the future. They were actually really good at this, and there's a little bit of luck involved. But kind of goes back to the Dax Hill conversation, right? Or, you know, penalties that erased sacks and penalties that erased takeaways for the Bengals this year. When you have those opportunities and you take them off the board because of a drop, because of a mistake, it, it, it's crucial. It's brutal. And, and that penalty conversation that I mentioned earlier for Baltimore is also very noteworthy. You can't have those kinds of mistakes in the playoffs. There is a different gear that you see these teams get to on defense, especially in the AFC. I know there's a lot of points scored in that NFC championship game that we haven't gotten into in a ton of depth yet. We'll go there next. But playoff football is so different, such high stakes on every single play. And, and those margins that I'm talking about remain critical. And that's why you know you hear guys like Brian Callahan when he's on this show in the past, before he's the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, preach attentiveness to detail and you hear Lou Anarumo harp on takeaways and you see the way Jermaine Pratt we're going to talk about Pratt and Logan Wilson in tomorrow's show those guys have such a nose for the ball these are all things that matter a lot in the playoffs but another game to talk about James and a couple of quick notes that I want to hit on as well that, that we talked about before we started recording Jermaine Illuminor talking about the Chiefs in a tweet Mike McDonald mm -hmm. with that head coaching interview with Seattle will finish the show future with right tackle Coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. And passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And maybe Jermaine Illuminor has that passion, drive, and patience to be right tackle one for the Bengals. More on that in a second. But eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, 
really anything but a franchise right tackle. If you're into speed, power, style, eBay Motors has it, and they have you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home a playoff win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. NFC games, James. NFC game. It's only one. Oh, I got you. One NFC game. You ready? Running game featured much more here. Tight ends, Sam Laporta. And Travis Kelsey can talk about tight ends and running games here a little bit. But what what, what did you want to start on in the NFC? Uh, other than Jameer Gibbs looking so good. And I know he fumbled, but looking so good. Anyways, he wasn't there, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but what I want to talk about is, and, and we're, I think, fair to Zach Taylor when he makes decisions we disagree with in game or decisions we agree with. And we're, we'll be critical at the same time. I think we're fair. If Zach Taylor did what Dan Campbell did at the end of that game when they're down 10, everyone's talking about the fourth downs, which we can discuss them if you want. You're down 10. You have the ball inside the five. It is third down. If you decide to run the ball, you have three timeouts. You have to score. If you decide to run the ball there and you know you're going for it on fourth down, which is the right call because you're right there, you need to get the touchdown anyways. Have two plays called in the huddle. You can't burn one of your three timeouts because that's how you get the ball back. The moment he did that, their chances of winning went from, let's let's just say it was at 10% or 15%, and I don't know, but it was down to probably 1% because an onside kick banking on that is like 2% just for that to work. Not needing, not knowing if you're going to get the touchdown already, not knowing if you're going to, to make the field goal, all of the other things that go into it. Ridiculous. I can't believe the Lions did that, and that was one of many gaffes errors from the players and the and the staff but the, the the staff that's the one call that they should be kicking themselves hard about like if i'm interviewing ben johnson the lions offensive coordinator I, for the head coaching job of whatever you know if it if it's washington or seattle i'm literally asking about that play like hey why didn't you call two plays in the huddle why did you guys not realize you couldn't burn a time out there and I want to see his answer because you can't just throw Dan Campbell under the bus because that's a whole sideline. Someone has to say you can't lose one of those three timeouts. Losing 10 seconds, that's fine. You cannot lose the timeouts. It it didn't cost them the game, but it, it cost them a chance to to pull off a comeback and force overtime. It would have made things it would have given them a bigger chance, like you said. And and that's just like basic execution kind of stuff. Oh. That's why it's it's such an interesting point or, or such a, a poignant point i guess uh important point to make you just can't make that mistake that that's a coaching 101 kind of deal right there it's, it's a hard lesson to learn in that spot for dan campbell and for ben ben johnson i mean do it on the second biggest stage in the sport the the doorstep of the super bowl take that chance away Tough way for that to go. The fourth downs, I don't have a problem with. I don't know that we need to get into these in much depth. I think they've been discussed to death elsewhere. But, you know, you have a lot of drops. You have fourth down drops. And you look at the Chiefs-Ravens game and some of the touchdowns in that game, there weren't many, were scored after fourth down conversions. So you can see where it helped teams win games in the AFC. And mm -hmm. the Lions got to where they are playing that way. So hard to fault any of that. Uh, but but some other notes here just before we talk about Illuminar and McDonald are the running disparity between these teams. We talked about how the Ravens just didn't really run the ball outside of Lamar Jackson getting eight carries, some of those designed runs against the Chiefs. The Chiefs tried to run the ball, 32 carries, under three yards per carry against the Ravens, who play good run defense, but that's why you have a low-scoring game on one side and the other. You have explosive runs for Jamison Williams, for Christian McCaffrey, for Brock Purdy making plays with his legs. You have over six yards per carry for David Montgomery on his 15 carries. You have tight ends and Sam Laporta and Travis Kelsey making plays. These are themes that we've discussed this offseason. They're themes that we've discussed in the playoffs. They're themes we continue to discuss. But another thing 
because that's not new, is that uh, turns out having the best offensive line in football in the Detroit Lions and a good running game and a functional passing offense just isn't enough when your defense can't hold up. And a lot of team sport stuff showing up in both of these games. It takes 22 guys, well, more than 22 guys. It takes both units of 22 players on the field to to win in the playoffs. And I think that that's another thing that's easy to forget when we get into the playoffs, we talk a lot about Joe Burrow, Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, whoever, quarterbacks, coaches, Kyle Shanahan, Dan Johnson, whoever. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson, Dan Campbell. Dan Pitcher. Dan Pitcher, sure. Takes a full team. That's all I'm it, trying to say. It, it does. I think uh, it does. At the same time, if the Lions had Joe Burrow at quarterback, they win, right? I mean, yeah. Oh, honestly, if no doubt p- people aren't ready for this, if the Lions had Zach Taylor, they win just as head coach. Who knows? Like, wild to say, yeah, but I, I trust Zach to make the right call in those moments. He probably kicks one of the two field goals. The second one's the one that I would have. Kicked. What, what was the, the distance on the two field goals? Cause they were both 40, 40 plus, right? 48. It, by the way, if you don't trust your kicker in the NFC Championship game to kick a 48-yard field goal, then you should have already had a new kicker. They they do need a new kicker, but it's been pointed out that Bag Badgley Bag Bagley I don't know how to pronounce his name either. Another name is 37 of of 48 on 40 to 49 yard field goals in his career. Wouldn't be on my roster. Wouldn't be on my yeah. roster. I'm I'm just if you can't think about it, that's why Evan McPherson. Versus Randy Bullock is why the Bengals beat the Titans in the divisional round two years ago. The Detroit Titans were punting. Lost the, the, the kicker this year. He only played four games for Detroit to, to Bagley this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they've, but the point is, fine. There's got to be someone that you trust to make a 40 something yard field goal. And Ideally. if you can't, I, I mean, it's, it's not like we're talking about New England wins here. It's not where they were. I know. So I, it's tough, but the first one they should have gotten the first four, fourth down and it's just poor execution by the player. So yeah. you, you don't catch the pass. So that, that's the thing about like, if Zach Taylor's the head coach, do the guys catch the ball where they drop the ball? Um, well, they drop that one. I think he kicks the second one and yeah, then he certainly, exactly. and then he certainly doesn't burn a timeout that you can't burn. He, he certainly passes on third down first off. <laughs> He'd say, Ben, Hey Ben, call the pass play here. Yeah. He'd also but, be calling but, the play. So who knows? There's a whole butterfly effect. Let's yeah. uh let's talk Jermaine Illuminor and Mike McDonald to get out of yeah. here. Yeah. Jermaine Illuminor is the next right tackle of the Cincinnati Bengals. He said it w- without saying it. Virtually. You like that headline? You like how I did that? Uh I'm gonna read the tweet. I pulled the tweet up here. So he's 29, played the past couple of years for the Raiders, right tackle, was drafted by the Ravens in the fifth round, uh, back in the 2017 draft. But he said, You can call me a hater. I don't care. I don't like the Chiefs at all. We beat them this year. Yeah, cool. But I want to beat them when it matters. I don't care about the comments on this. Uh, the players, fans, I don't care. Congrats to them for making another Super Bowl. But I hope I get the opportunity to beat you when it matters. Well, there's one quarterback in the NFL that's beat Patrick Mahomes when it matters. And he might, he's, he's named Joe Burrow, and he might need a right tackle if Jonah Williams sign, signs elsewhere, which feels pretty inevitable at this point. Yeah, it's not like Illuminor is some prize jewel of the free agent class, but he's a guy we talked about last year. It's a guy that keeps you open in the first round to a tackle if there's one you really like that's available. And it's one that shouldn't break the bank the way that, you know, we've talked about Mike and Wenu a lot. He's projected to get nearly $15 million a year, 26-year-old free agent on a first-time free agency deal where he has positional flexibility and Wenu is going to cost a little bit more. No doubt about that. I think we can agree there. So Illuminor, while he's not necessarily a stud, is certainly a solid piece similar to the level of Jonah Williams, to be honest, maybe a touch higher in recent years, maybe a touch lower depends on, you know, who, who you ask probably. He would help in the run game for those wondering. I think he would be better against the run or, you know, running the ball with the cat. And, and uh, it's a, it's a solid depth piece that we're going to be talking about this off season as well. But it was an interesting tweet. Mike McDonald, meanwhile, we've talked about it a lot. We've alluded to it throughout the show. Interviewing with Seattle. Again, like I said, James, I get the feeling that that is their preferred candidate. We'll see what happens there. Maybe by the time you listen to this episode, that has been decided. 
but that would be a blow to the Ravens and is something that bears watching as well from the Bengals point of view. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. We're joined by Mike Santagata to review Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson's 2023 season, some film takeaways tomorrow. Until then, thanks for listening to this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.